So today is Monday and I kind of recorded a whole bunch of stuff that's a little bit out of sequence for today. Um, but today it's going to be all about my recapping my current 12 week year. Guys, 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 look what returned over the weekend. I don't know if you can see them, but that little grayish line, the mountains have returned. Today, I can see the mountains on my walk. I am so happy about this. Yesterday, Robo and I went roller skating with our buddies and our skate crew up in Golden. And we were literally driving over there and going, oh my gosh, what just showed up on the horizon? What are those? It's the mountains. So this video was supposed to be a whole larger part of like a week. Um, but I realized today has really focused on a 12 week year recap, looking at the way that things have gone on this particular Monday in trying to set my life forward for when I come back for my trip. And so I'm breaking this out from my weekly recap and setting this aside as a separate video um, because I feel like this is going to be a little bit more effective for you. Um, just because this week, this day, this day, Monday has been all about my 12 week year and trying to reset. What am I going to do? This is what I've been talking about all day. And so this is what Monday is about for you is reevaluating what is your 12 week year. question for you as you have been following along with me I know a lot of you came here because of my work on the 12 week year some of you have found me just through searching and trying to figure out like how do you apply this into your life well today I'm going to be talking about my current 12 week year I have to put the caveat it's technically a 10 week year because of the way that I'm traveling and I'm deciding to cut this off um, because for me accomplishing these goals while I'm traveling is usually really challenging um, and also the fact that I've recognized that as much as I have gotten back onto my 12 week year habit for the past 10 weeks this has been a really crummy year and I'm going to show you why in this particular video and I'm also going to show you what I'm planning on doing differently to make things better. I've already taken the time to go through and write down all of my scores. This right here is pretty dismal. The other thing about this particular 12 week year is that this is my final week. I know it's supposed to be 12 weeks and it's only 10, but it's because I'm going out of town and I decided that rather than try and keep this going while I was gone, I was just going to start it over and start it over when I get home. So that would be starting on no, not November, September 10th is when I'm gonna start my next 12 week year. And so with this, I've been also then going back through all of my data for the past few weeks um, and trying to figure out, you know, how well did I do? Um, and so this is the top sheet that I've got um, here for everything. Um, and I did not go through the whole effort of writing out like my score for every single tactic. Um, simply because for some of this stuff, I realized that I have some other questions. So like my goal one is to be healthy, it's to be physically active, and it's to get around somewhere around 120 pounds. Um, this is my ideal weight right now. The things that are going on with my little alien are screwing that up. And so the bigger question is, rather than like tactics, my lag indicators are part of this, but I realized that I have some of the wrong lag indicators and these are gonna go into my next 12 week here and they are very simply, do I feel less stress? That is why I'm doing most of these things every single day or trying to. And also, am I active on a daily, almost daily basis? Well, if I'm doing these things consistently, then I should be. Yay. Um, so the real other indicator that I need to know is whether or not has my weight changed? And it has, it's gone up a wee bit, like, but, um, you know, these, this is something that changes. It changes during the day, depending upon when you actually weigh yourself. But if I go back through all of my previous weeks, I can see that it's gone up. It's, uh, well, I don't remember what that one was. <laughs> um, yeah, I also didn't write that in there. Apparently 130, it definitely went up. Um, you know, we have something 127.8. Hey, between two weeks, it's not bad. Um, also, appar apparently I'm really terrible at actually writing down this metric. Um, yeah, but I mean, overall, yay, yay, that's the closest I got, right? Going downhill. Okay, yeah, but I mean, when you do that, you get to see like, hey, this was at least what my consistency was. Um, going back to my sheet though, 
Um, we can see that telling stories and sharing extraordinary ideas through video, this is the percentage of how well I actually did in this category. This is absolutely atrocious. Um, but this is telling me that something about either this goal or these particular tactics did not work right. And so this is something I'm redeveloping for my next 12 week year. Um, also, when it comes to writing about business and road tripping, um, this one I actually did pretty good on. Um, like that's not, that's not terrible in terms of a score. It's definitely nowhere near, you know, the 85% that is recommended. Because if you can maintain an 85% average, you'll meet your goal in 12 weeks. Well, yeah, that sucks. So, okay, this also I'm realizing is kind of a really crummy goal, like write about business every day. Well, that's just a tactic itself. Um, so I need to more clearly define what does this mean? What do I want to see as a result of this? And also, what do I want to see as a result of that? So one of the point of tactics in a 12 week year is to evaluate your effectiveness in doing a thing. Um, and just like running an experiment multiple times and not changing anything and expecting a different result doesn't work, it's the same thing in your 12 week year. And so some of my tactics have been the same for the past seven of my 12 week years. And even though in some instances they're working, some of them have not. And this is a really key indicator in my first goal of being healthy, being active, and being rested. I feel like I'm definitely much more active and I feel like I'm most of the time more rested. That's not always true, but I'm not necessarily meeting the health goals that I have. Now granted right now, there's a couple of things that are messing those up, including the fibroid that's in my uterus. So once that gets taken care of, I'm hoping that I'll be able to have more control over this. Um, but in the meantime, there are still some things that I can be doing. Uh, one of the key things that I've been trying to manage with my weight is by managing my food. Um, and something that I have learned over the past few weeks is that my particular tactic for this is not working and in part because it's based on a flawed premise. Um, something that I have always been taught and I've always been led to believe is that carbs are very bad for you, that if you eliminate the amount of carbs that you're eating, then you'll naturally lose weight. The thing that I have learned is that carbs are actually very important. I did this really interesting study um, a couple weekends ago, um, and I just spent like the entire day on the couch going through YouTube, which was awesome. And I was able to just backtrack a bunch of questions that I had been trying to research. And one of them was healthy eating habits. Like when we say, what is a balanced meal? What does it actually look like? And I learned a lot about what a balanced meal actually looks like and what your food intake should be over the course of a day. And as a process, I learned that carbs are playing a vital role in your health because they provide fiber, they provide carbohydrates that you need in order to burn fat, in order to have energy throughout your day. But the key metric that a lot of people miss, and I was definitely one of them, is the amount of vegetables that you're supposed to be eating. Vegetables and fruits we are taught should be about five a day, but what does that actually look like? Well, I learned that's either five individual pieces of a fruit, like one orange, one tomato, one apple, a grapefruit, something like that, and then five individual servings or other servings that are 80 grams each of that particular vegetable. So 80 grams of a pepper, for example, generally equates to about half a pepper. 80 grams of a cucumber equates to about a half of a cucumber. And so by increasing the volume of vegetables in my life, I will improve my health, I will improve how full I feel, and I will decrease the amount of calories that I have. But with that, I still need carbs. And so one of the metrics that I'm gonna try, one of the tactics I'm gonna try in my next 12 week year, rather than worrying about not eating two meals a day with carbs, like trying to cut out carbs for two meals is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to focus instead on getting at least four vegetables a day into my diet with the goal of trying to get up to five. And through that, I'm gonna see what happens. I've been kind of experimenting with this a little bit over the past couple weeks ever since learning this new information. And I will tell you what, I feel a lot better. My weight may not have changed a whole lot, but I feel a lot better. And ultimately, this is the point. I want to be healthy. The number that I weigh on the scale is kind of something that's really arbitrary, um, especially right now when it's really frustrating me because it feels like it's not going anywhere. And I know that I'm trying to eat better. And I know some of that is just related to how much extra weight I'm carrying in my uterus. I've got a thingy the size of my fist in there. So that is something that I'm looking forward to changing. This is something I love about the 12 week year is that it gets you feedback 
you know, you can try something a million times, you can do the same thing a million times, but it's not until you start getting feedback that you start realizing, okay, the way that I'm approaching this particular goal could be all wrong. And so by having the opportunity every 12 weeks, or in my case, this 10 weeks to reset and try something new is incredible because through that, you're able to actually achieve what you want to achieve. So that is one thing that I'm looking forward to changing in my goal one for my next 12 week year. Um, I'm not really going to change a whole lot of everything else. Like I still want to get my water intake up. I still want to read. I still want to spend time walking and skating. And these are things that I feel are working in terms of that being healthy and rested goal. Um, but right now I need to get my actual health, like my nutritional health back under control. And so that's something I wanna do. Um, when I was talking about uh, my book and participating in NaNoWriMo, uh, one of you guys, forget your name, I'm so sorry, suggested uh, putting my writing exercise as a tactic down on my 12 week year. So I'm going to be doing that and just having something to you know, chunk away at. It's not just write for 10 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day and just let it be 30 minutes a day and just check it off. Like my goal is to produce a book. And so the goal is the book, the tactic is writing. Um, and by having that in my head, it will be a little bit easier because I'm trying to remember what the heck I'm doing. And I think this is one of the reasons why my telling a story failed, why even my writing about business and road tripping failed because they were just an arbitrary, just write something but they didn't have a framework into what kind of body of result they were going to result in. You know, the result for my telling extraordinary stories was supposed to be three little mini documentaries, kind of like what I did with the um, Let's Talk QWERTY video that I made earlier this year. Um, but because I didn't have any ideas and because I didn't have any concrete thing to follow, that never happened. So I want to put this new idea of writing for 30 minutes a day into the context of I want to write a novel. Um, and so for that, I'm also going to do something a little bit more when it comes to that road tripping and blogging thing. Uh, my husband and I have a little thing up our sleeve that we're in the process of trying to put together. And so I want to create a chunkable list. Like these are the things that I want to have done. These are the due dates. This is what it's going to take to get to them. I used this process earlier last year when I was writing my editing book and basically had, this is what I want to have done by this date in order to get this thing out. And that's something I've not really used in the past couple of my 12 week years because it felt like I had turned my 12 week year into a to-do list. But I'm realizing that in not doing that kind of a thing, I'm not really knocking out the kind of stuff that I want to knock out. So I'm going to apply that for this little thing that Robo and I have up our sleeve. And I'm also wanting to put something similar like this together for my business. Um, you know, for the longest time, my business had the thing of just increasing a money amount, which never really worked. <laughs> I want to do that. I'm um, starting to get regular income, starting to get regular clients, which is fantastic. Um, but that boosting that income up kind of a thing, I need to reevaluate. And some of the things that I have on that list include going through and creating the content that I need to create in order to grow my business. And so that's the kind of thing that I want to have another chunkable list for. Um, the only conundrum with this is that it kind of gets me four goals, um, being healthy, writing a novel, uh, working on our little project, Robo and I, and building my business. And it's recommended that you don't do four in any given 12 week year because it ends up becoming something that is very challenging to do. It's easier to achieve three goals. Um, in my case, it's achieve, it's easier to achieve no goals. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think this is how this is going to play out. I've been over the past week trying to capture my thoughts down and looking at like what has this kind of been feeling like to get an idea of how do I want this next 12 week year to play out. Um, and after having like some of those concrete numbers finishing out last week, letting that be week 10 of my current 12 week year, um, I can really see like some of the results of things and recognizing that I really, really need to change some of the tactics that I'm doing because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not achieving the vision for my life that I want to. Um, and this is what I love about the 12 week year. It tells you whether or not you're succeeding. And so right now I need to revamp my next 12 week year. I need to revamp my approach to the 12 week year. In some ways it's become kind of habitual. I just you know, just do things and just follow like my little check boxes, but they're not necessarily adding up to the results that I want. And so it's time to make a change. Now, when it comes to prepping my next year, it'll be year eight on my 12 week year. 
Again, this is actually going to be another short year. It's going to be eight weeks from the time that I get home and get started on my next 12 week year until my surgery on October 30th to deal with my little alien that is inside my uterus. And so because of that, I'm gonna then be spending the next four weeks on my back, recovering, trying to get my feet back under me, um, healing up from that surgery, and then probably spending again the next two to four weeks up until January just getting back into feeling like I'm normal and being able to get up to speed and up to task at my regular full capacity. So because of that, I'm not going to try and make this next 12 week year, year eight, into a full 12 week year because the last four of them, I'm gonna be incapacitated. Um, so this next year, this year eight is only going to be eight weeks long, which I think is kind of funny. Um, and then I will start year nine come January 1st. Um, and so for that, I'm trying not to put too much into my week, but I also kind of feel like I might be putting too much in. Um, you know, four goals is a lot to try and do, um, but we'll see what happens. I think also if I make a better point of like acknowledging the fact that, look, I only have eight weeks because I only have eight weeks. This is how much I think I can reasonably expect to get done. Um, you know, expand that a little bit so that I have a challenge and so that it's not too easy. Um, but also realizing that, you know what, this is the pace that I'm at right now. And I'd much rather have success and I'd much rather to make progress than bite off something that's so much bigger than I can chew and not make it happen. And so, with that, that is how I'm going to plant out year eight for my next 12 week year. So this is the end of Monday's video all about the 12 week year. I hope that you like it. I hope that it's been helpful for you, um, especially as you may or may not be in different stages of your own 12 week year or trying to figure out like, is this a system that's going to work for me? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And often it doesn't work because of your own uh, ability to put in the effort and also it might not work because your tactics or your goals may not be in line with your vision and that is something that I have really discovered in this current 12 week year in year seven um, and quite frankly that might even be part of the reason why I had such a hard time getting back into this habit after I came back from NAB in April. So with that, I'm going to close out this video. If you have any questions about how this year went or things that you would like me to explain in further detail about the 12 week year, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Also, if you have stories about how your 12 week year has either been succeeding or not succeeding, uh, go ahead and leave those in the comment section as well. Um, especially if you have questions as to like, why might others be working for me? Uh, go ahead and leave those. I'd love to help you problem solve and help answer from my experience as to why that may or may not be working for you. So I hope that you like this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe. I don't always talk in this much detail about the 12 week year. Usually I'm documenting my work as an entrepreneur and building my business, but at its core, the 12 week year helps me guide that. And every single week I start with my weekly accountability meeting is with myself and looking at my data and saying, how will I do last week and planning out the next week. So you will see it if you subscribe and otherwise you'll also be learning what it's like when you're an entrepreneur and at the bottom rungs of learning to build your business. It's tied to the reason why my channel and this particular series is called Level Grinding because like when you are building a new character in a video game and they get more and more powerful as you go through the levels, that is exactly what I'm doing. So I hope you all have a great week. I will see you all when I get back from Creative Morning Summit and from New York State. So thank you all for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I'll see you soon. Bye.